This week, journalists around the world, from reputable science news outlets to Time magazine, have been pushing the fake headline that the Dallas-based company Colossal Biosciences has brought back the direwolf from extinction using genetic technologies. Cue the clip from everyone's favorite fictional chaotician. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. In reality, though, these genetically modified gray wolves don't actually have even a single gene from an ancient direwolf genome. So why is everyone telling us that the dire wolf has been brought back from extinction? Oh, this is what the first dire wolf howl sounds like. 13,000 years after the last dire wolf walked the earth, scientists say they've now brought them back. The dire wolf is the first de-extinct species. A howl 13,000 years in the making. Colossal Biosciences is also the same company that brought to us familiar headlines about the woolly mice just a couple weeks before this. Well, is it any coincidence that the company behind this Colossal Biosciences is also the most highly valued company in Dallas? So you may be asking yourself, Grayson, why are you raining on everyone's parade? Can't you just let people enjoy thinking these are dire wolves and woolly mammoths and oh, just let people enjoy their woolly mice? Well, I think that there are specific ulterior motives that are driving both the insane valuation of this biotech company as well as all of these headlines trying to gaslight us into believing that they actually brought back a legit direwolf. I mean, the PR for this has been so insane. They've literally had photo shoots of these things sitting on the throne from Game of Thrones. And all of these science journalists and news anchors have been talking about these things like they're direwolves brought back from extinction after thousands of years. And it's driving me up the wall because there's not a single shred of actual direwolf genetic material in these things in the slightest. Scientists are using genes from gray wolves to create dire wolves. So let's break down some of the science behind how this team of scientists accomplished this and what exactly it is that they accomplished. Now, dire wolves are an ancient species that's in a different genus than the wolves and dogs of today, which are in genus Canis, whereas dire wolves are a separate genus Anoscyon. Today, there are no living members of Anoscyon left. However, we do have several samples of them, the most famous of which being from the La Brea tar pits in LA. And the scientists at Colossal actually did start with genuine ancient dire wolf DNA samples that they got from two different specimens. Now, these DNA samples are fragmentary because of how old they are, but the scientists were still able to read them and see what genuine dire wolf genes were like and from that infer what types of traits the direwolves likely had based on those genes. However, there was just one problem, right? These scientists did not take the genes from the direwolf and implant them into a gray wolf to make it some sort of new genetic hybrid. That still wouldn't be a direwolf, but that's not even what these scientists did, because they found out that three of these genes, which contributed to a direwolf's phenotype, specifically its fur pattern, when you put it into a gray wolf, remember, a different genus, not just a different species, but a different genus of animal, well, it results in genetic deformities such as blindness and deafness. So obviously they didn't just put the dire wolf genes into a gray wolf because it was incompatible. So what did the scientists do? They looked at the dire wolf genes and they noticed that they were very similar to the gray wolf genes except for a few slight changes in amino acid substitutions. The scientists isolated about 14 different substitutions that needed to be made to the gray wolf genome to make it resemble more like the genes that they selected in the dire wolf genome. So this is not taking the genes from the dire wolf and implanting it into a gray wolf. It's slightly tweaking the most efficacious locations in the genome of a gray wolf to mutate those proteins to make them more similar to the dire wolf proteins. This is genetic cosplay. If you were to perform a DNA test on this animal, it would come back Canis lupus, gray wolf. Now it would be a mutant variety of gray wolf an intentionally designed mutant of gray wolf, but it is absolutely not a dire wolf. 
you know what it's not even actually dire wolf cosplay now that i think about it because it seems like they were trying to achieve the phenotype of the fictional dire wolf ghost from game of thrones that has that characteristic white fur actual dire wolves are thought to have light colored fur but not pure white like this that is purely a fictional game of thrones element and that is what they're truly cosplaying as this is not a dire wolf cosplay it's just a straight up ghost cosplay but they actually mutated a real living thing's genetics to achieve it also it should be noted that all of this information is just from interviews that the scientists have had and not from an actual peer-reviewed publication because the scientists haven't published a paper about their results yet. Um, I mean, I guess Colossal Biosciences is a private company, so they don't really have to, but I guess we just have to take their word for it that this is the process that they followed. And by the way, even if you could successfully transplant and substitute every single gene from the dire wolf into the gray wolf genome, you still would not have an animal that would pass a DNA test in to be the same species as a direwolf if you were going to look at the entire genome because there's a lot more to the genome than just the gene content like you might have all the correct genes there to get a direwolf but in terms of the regulatory elements in terms of the non-coding DNA I mean that's a lot of the total genomic fingerprint of an animal so if you're just going to go based on the full genome comparisons even if they changed every single gene, which they didn't even change one gene from a dire wolf to the gray wolf in this instance, but even if they did every single one, it still would not be an actual dire wolf at the end of the day. In fact, there's not even any guarantee that it would look the same as a dire wolf or if it would even be able to reproduce with a dire wolf because just because all the genes are there doesn't mean that they're in the right patterns of expression in the right regulatory frameworks or even if the number of chromosomes would be correct or not to enable uh, the, these two animals to reproduce and have fertile offspring so that even then it's not guaranteed to be the same species as an actual og direwolf is now the head scientist leading the colossal team goes so far as to redefine even what a species is in her response. That animal looks like a dire wolf, it will behave like a dire wolf, and it is a dire wolf. I mean, she's basically making the argument that I hear from literal young earth creationists. Oh, hey, well, if this fossil looks kind of like a modern day horseshoe crab or a maple leaf, therefore it must be the same species. Like, these are kinds of arguments that are employed to try to debunk evolution from apologists. I would not expect a scientist trying to make these sorts of arguments to claim that what they brought back and created in their lab is actually a real dire wolf because they think it looks like one even though we don't even have one to compare it to <laughs> so why is colossal biosciences trying to engineer these two new kinds of genetic monstrosities that resemble ancient extinct species and why is it that investors have valued this company at over $10 billion for doing so? Well, ostensibly, the company says that their goal is conservation. They want to preserve the genomes of these ancient species and get paid as a biobank of biodiversity, by the way, from public governments or NGOs, but that's a different aside. The company claims that they're doing what they're doing because of environmental conservation. They want to conserve species that have already gone extinct by bringing them back and reintroducing them to their natural environments. What we do today is, I think, what the hope for the future is for biodiversity and for nature. And so to be on sort of the ground floor of creating a tool that will be the solution for our biodiversity crisis is the most motivating thought that I could ever have. What we're doing at Colossal has never been done before. I hope everyone around the world is leveraging the technologies that we develop here, and I hope that biodiversity loss and extinction is just a thing of the past. A very manicured message to hide the fact that no one would receive a $10 billion valuation for doing those kinds of work. So what's the actual expectation that these investors have of Clearly, they are expecting massive future earnings from this company. 
Now, even if they were actually bringing back legitimate direwolves and woolly mammoths, there would still be huge ethical and moral dilemmas with this. But I actually don't want to go too far into those because personally, I think that that justification for this is actually complete BS and Colossal Biosciences is not valued at $10 billion because they're trying to push forward conservation efforts. There's something more that they're trying to monetize behind this. And I have two guesses as to what that is. First of all, the most obvious one, designer zoo animals. I mean, if they successfully convince a large enough group of people that they really did bring back legit direwolves, everyone's gonna want to see a dire wolf even though again they are not any bigger than gray wolves it's not like this huge wolf that people are expecting it's literally just they tried to make ghost from game of thrones they just made a white gray wolf <laughs> but okay the thinking is people are going to want to see this every zoo that can afford one is going to want to buy the new dire wolf so that they can get audiences to come to their zoo. Every zoo is gonna want a woolly mammoth. Every zoo is gonna want a Tasmanian tiger. That is a big business, but a $10 billion business, it does not make. So what about my second reason? Well, currently, there's a lot of ethical and legal issues behind designer babies and designing new types of organisms in labs, but, if you can essentially push forward the kind of technology that would be required for these kind of designer genetic projects, but you can do it under the guise of doing conservation work and bringing back extinct species, well, it's like two birds with one stone. The kinds of technologies that you could potentially develop along the way would also aid you in any kind of designer genetic projects that you might want to do on any currently living species i think that many of the investors that are pushing this valuation up to 10 billion might be hoping to get some sort of CRISPR 2.0 type play out of this where some sort of biotechnology that emerges from this company doing all of these experienced experiments to literally genetically engineer current species into I mean, it's not even into previously extinct species. They're genetically engineering them into totally new, never before seen mutant varieties of currently living species that have new phenotypic features that are designed by these scientists that are merely inspired by previous ancient DNA samples. If you wanted to get approval for a project that involves taking a current species and just creating new mutants out of that species in an effort to progress genetic engineering forward as a field, good luck with getting the permits for that one. But if you want to do all the exact same type of science mutating currently living species, but under the guise of conser conservation and bringing back an extinct species, it's much easier to get public support behind bringing back the woolly mammoth or bringing back the direwolf than it would be to get public support behind a lab that is just creating never before seen types of mutants of living, currently living species. Again, currently Colossal Biosciences as a company isn't making any revenue. They need investment, which means that they need hype, which means that they need public buy-in, which is why it's so important to them that the public genuinely believes that they are bringing back actual direwolves or actually woolly mammoths. Because if nobody believed them and said, well, that's not a real direwolf, I don't want to see your weird designer mutant gray wolf, well, then suddenly their entire business model collapses. That is why it is so important that this company gaslight you via, I, I don't know how much money that they have spent on PR, but everyone on earth, it seems, is talking about how this new company brought back the dire wolf and how excited they are for it to bring back the woolly mammoth. I mean, that is going to drive exactly the kind of investment that they are looking for. If you look at who started this company, it's a serial entrepreneur who's done tons of software and mobile apps and crypto and AI type companies. I mean, this whole thing really reminds me of the Tesla bubble and Elon Musk, right? he convinced all of these people to invest in the future. Oh, that Tesla represents this bold technological vision that you're buying into for this sort of sci-fi future. And it 
basically seems like Colossal is taking a page out of Elon's playbook with this. And instead of delivering any actual direwolves, they're literally just coming up with things that they think looks like a direwolf from the TV show Game of Thrones and trying to pass it off as a legitimate real direwolf that they can then get some sort of... Um, you know, government funds to act as a biobank of genet ancient genetic diversity, or they can get these conservation groups or environmentalist groups to buy into what they're doing. It seems very similar to the way that Elon grew Tesla, trying to act like it was some great environmentalist company that really cared about global warming, and, and it just was all BS, so that they could grift and try to pander to an audience and to government contracts and it really just seems like colossal biosciences is doing the exact same thing with another product that doesn't deliver anything that they're promising and of course in the coming years colossal biosciences plans to release a mammoth brought back from extinction again it's just going to be a mutant african elephant elon musk even tweeted asking how long until he can buy his own personal miniature woolly mammoth pet Colossal even wants to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, which was one of my favorite animals as a kid. But since there aren't any close living relatives like there are for mammoths with elephants or for direwolves, well, what are they going to start with? <laughs> it's actually, they're planning on starting with a rodent like marsupial called a Dunnart. So they're going to go from this to this. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, I might be able to believe that they could change a few amino acid around to make an elephant express sort of, you know, the woolly hair type gene. Okay, it still wouldn't be the actual woolly mammoth gene, but it would be close enough to maybe do the same biochemical task. Sure. But to go from a Dunnart to a Tasmanian tiger, I, I am very doubtful that you're going to accomplish this with just one by one CRISPR inserts of a specific amino acid substitutions. I mean, we don't have the pictures for what a direwolf actually looked like, but we've got photos for the Tasmanian tiger. So what are the odds that these new pseudo direwolves even look anything like an actual direwolf? Not even that well, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> we don't actually know what these direwolf genes would make them look like when they're expressed in the full context of a direwolf's genome. We only know what these mutated pseudo direwolf genes look like expressed in the context of a gray wolf's genome. But what are pseudo Tasmanian tiger mutated genes going to look like in a Dunhart? <laughs> I mean, is this going to express anything like a Tasmanian tiger? I, I think that uh, this is by far the biggest long shot, and this is the one we actually have photo evidence for what the goal is for it to look like. Guys, I'm very, very doubtful. I do not know what kind of genetic monstrosity that Colossal Biosciences is going to turn these poor, cute little Dunarts into, but uh, I, if I was a betting man, I would not be putting very much money that it's going to resemble anything like a Tasmanian tiger at the end of this, and I don't even want to think about the kind of quality of life that these ge new genetic mutants that colossal biosciences are creating are, are going to have like this is not bringing back extinct species to go and fulfill the niche that they used to fulfill in the environment this is creating new mutants of existing species to just see what happens when they're released into the environment and make a bunch of money for all the zoos that want to buy them so people can look at them i mean this is, this is dark stuff.